It's lovely to see you both, neither one of you wearing a skirt. Uh, <laughs> Jay, Jay, moved on a bit. <laughs> Jay, tell me about your memories of that extraordinary win. It was a terrific performance, very, very lively, very colourful, I might say, as well. It was, very primary colours. Yeah. It was an amazing night, and those three minutes changed our life. Um, I think Mike was the only one who actually thought we'd win it, but to be honest, we went, went in there, and everybody... I mean, it's an amazing competition. It's transformed over the years. But at the time, I was thinking, oh, I'm not sure we're going to win this. It was only Mike Nolan who was like, no, we're going to win, we're going to win. <laughs> but, um, so it was literally the last three votes that won us the competition. And I do think the skirt rip probably helped a little bit. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Cheryl, it transformed your lives then. You Absolutely. Became, you became very successful after that. It's literally... Immediately after we won, we had to stand on a big platform and we were surrounded by photographers, cameramen from all over the world. And we looked out and thought, it's just changed our lives. That three minutes or less than three minutes and those four points. And here we are talking to you now, still gigging, still looking forward to Eurovision in the UK uh, and still enjoying ourselves, enjoying our life. It absolutely transformed our lives. Jay, it's all been positive, has it? Because, I mean, ma ma many people suffer from fame. You, have you not suffered from fame? <laughs> um, I think I was lucky in that my parents were in show business. Ah. From a young age, I was told that usually you get three or four years in, in any industry, in the, in the entertainment industry. Being famous usually lasts that, so I was kind of slightly prepared for it. Cheryl's had an incredible time. I mean, Cheryl's fame and success has never really stopped. I went on into teaching quite a long time. But I think it's just, I think you just have to go in and enjoy it and see where it takes you. I do believe yes. in your path in life. You know, if you're meant to do this, it will somehow get you back on track. And um, I've had a different route, but we're back together, stronger than ever. We've got a concert coming up, and we're still loving being on stage. Um, Cheryl, uh, has it bothered you that over the years, Eurovision has become the butt of so many jokes? I mean, for many years, it was absolutely sent up, wasn't it? Yeah. By the presenters uh, at the UK end. Did yeah. that bother you? Because Yes. Yes. It did bother me. Even Terry, eventually, and, and we all adore Terry and miss him Terry dreadfully. Wogan. Terry Wogan. But even then, he, he was making too much fun of it. But I, I get why he was, because, you know, our voting was going lower and lower and lower to the point where eventually it was nil point. And, you know, you don't, can't get any lower than that. And But I hated it because Eurovision is such a... a it's such a wonderful thing that happens. Once a year, the biggest musical extravaganza in the world, the most colourful, the, the, everything about it is fabulous. Don't knock it. And Enjoy because of Ukraine, it. I think people's attitudes have changed a bit. I mean, I think yes. know, people are going to be very keen this year in Liverpool, knowing that otherwise it would be in Kiev, but it cannot be. Yeah. Um, you're going to be at the O2? We are. Tell it's us about... The what, end of the month, 31st of March. This would have been our anniversary, which would have been two years ago, but because of the pandemic, it all had to be cancelled. And But now we're going to put on our anniversary-ish concert. Um, on the 31st, we're going to be doing all the hits, and it's going to be an amazing show, and we're really looking forward to it. The Bucks Fizz. Hits. <laughs> the Bucks Fizz Bucks hits, Fizz but there will be you some... Too. Yeah. We do, yeah. we do. The majority of the show will be Bucks Fizz, but um, we, we have had four albums out with Mike Stock from Sock Aiken and Mortimer since we've been called The Fizz, and we will be doing some of those tracks as well. But I must say, it won't be at the big O2. I mean, you know, in the words of a Bucks Fizz single, now those days are gone. But we, do, we will be at the Indigo, which is still a lovely venue. Yeah, OK. Smaller uh, uh, What is your... As you look back on that Eurovision night, what, what do you most recall? I think it's, you know, when I look at the highlights in my life, it was most definitely one of the highlights. There's two or three days that stand out in my life, and that was definitely one of them. So it was an amazing thing. My brother had actually competed the year before and came second, and the difference is, you know, winning or, or losing, you know, you, there's only one winner. And we've had an incredible career off the back of it, so... Thank goodness I went for that audition when I was just 19 in my Fiat 124, which was a Hoover, basically. Carol, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you still doing the same routines? We do the same routine, and unfortunately, even though we're all, like, 192 years of age, we still rip the skirts off. So uh, <laughs> some, things, some things never change. Yes! I, I didn't dare to ask that. <laughs> I, I, I was told it would be very inappropriate if we got into that. <laughs> no, but, that's all part but we rip our own skirts <laughs> off now. Are, are you going anywhere other than the O2? in the near future? We're always oh, yeah. thinking, yes. But if anyone wants to look, they can look on our website, thefizz.com. The